Hi, I'm Renee Zurich, the Splint Specialist here at Great Lakes Laboratories. Our lab has worked for years with the top teaching centers in the country so that we can help you be successful in using splints, treating TMD, and other muscle and occlusal disorders. Many of the treatments of TMD and bruxism start with the use of deprogrammers. These appliances are so easy to use and have gained a lot of acceptance and popularity in the past few years because of how effective they are. You can use them to treat headache sufferers, bruxers and our clenchers. They can use to help relax muscles, determine where the proper joint or CR position is, protect against further destruction of tooth enamel and wear, and also to help you diagnose a case. So how do they work? We're going to be talking a little bit about not only how the programmers work, but also how to choose the right design and how to deliver the case and what to instruct the patient to do. So in talking about how they work, most clinicians will agree that when only some or all of the anterior teeth are in contact, this helps the muscle contraction force to be much diminished to only about 30% compared to maximum intercuspation or centric occlusion. The lateral pterygoid muscles will actually relax, allowing the condyles to seat in their most comfortable or CR position. These images are courtesy of BiteFX and will illustrate how deprogrammers work. Muscles can actually be fired by different causes, but these muscles, because they're contracting on such a regular basis, will cause quite a few headaches and other problems for the patient. They can actually be helped be fired by different interferences by individual teeth, which will make the patient want to brox or clench and cause these muscles to be even worse and more painful than they were if they didn't do these habits. This also will cause quite a bit of tooth wear on the teeth, which you'll probably notice on your examination, as well as fremitus on individual teeth and can actually lead to abfractions. How the deprogrammer works is when it's placed in the patient's mouth and they're only contacting on some of those anterior teeth, the contacts are much more anterior of all those masticatory muscles. So because they're in front of the masseter and temporalis and lateral pterygoids, those muscles can't get the full amount of contraction that they normally could if the teeth were right where those masseters and other masticatory muscles are when all those teeth are in contact. So when all of those occlusal interferences are removed by the deprogrammer and the patient can function very smoothly without getting those interferences from happening and maximum intercuspation won't be able to allow the mandibular position to be affected. So this is caused by muscle relaxation, which will help those joints and condyles to seat in their proper position. And the deprogrammer will also remove any habitual functional movements that the patient might have developed to avoid pain. A way to test to see if a deprogrammer will work for your patient is by doing a load test. If during a load test, if the patient has any more than normal muscle tension or soreness, or if the patient starts to wear their deprogrammer after a week or so and they notice more than normal muscle tension and soreness, this could be an indication of an intercapsular problem. And in this case, a deprogrammer would be contraindicated. There's many designs to choose from, and it's always good to have a lot of tools in your tool belt in order to treat different patients for different situations that you might come across. The first appliance is the Great Lakes Mini Deprogrammer. This appliance has two options. It can either be built high enough so that there aren't any interferences or so that those posterior teeth are just out of contact. The way the appliance looks it's, is it's a one millimeter overlay that is from second bicuspid to second bicuspid. There's also a little bit of cold cure acrylic added to the anterior portion of this appliance for the lower four teeth to contact. The next appliance is the anterior deprogrammer, which was designed by Dr. Frank Spear. And his appliance is a one and a half millimeter complete occlusal coverage overlay. So it's a little bit thicker than an invisible retainer would be. And it has a bite plate that contacts cuspid to cuspid. So all six of the lower teeth are in contact. When this appliance is made, it's made high enough so that when the patient functions, there won't be any interferences in the posterior teeth whatsoever. 
John Coyce's design is very interesting because it's great for equilibration patients. What it looks like is very similar to a patient's Holly retainer after they've had orthodontic movement done. It's an acrylic plate with a wraparound labial bow. What's neat about this design is there aren't any occlusal um, coverage or any wires coming in or occlusally so that if you think that this case might be an equilibration case or you, th or you have plans of it being equilibrated, this would be the perfect appliance for that type of situation. The patient could actually wear the COIS appliance as a deprogrammer for any specified amount of time. And then when you go to do the equilibration appointment, the patient can wear it for one hour before their appointment. And at that time, you could either take a CI record and develop other treatment plans, or if you want to go ahead with the equilibration, they've already been deprogrammed, their muscles are relaxed, and you can go ahead with the equilibration. The nice thing about using this appliance for equilibration is it speeds it up quite a bit. So instead of it being a 45 minute appointment, it might actually be only a 15 minute appointment. If the patient doesn't have very good retention or if you want to be able to adjust this, the labial bow a little bit easier, you can actually go with a cantilever labial bow, which is easier to adjust. The Cranum is another great design for equilibrations because again, it doesn't have any occlusal coverage anywhere. The appliance looks like a Holly retainer without any wires attached to it. So it's a little bit an acrylic plate with a little discluding element for the lower two centrals only to contact. This appliance requires a very nice vaulted palette and lingual undercuts for the appliance to stay in place. So if you have a patient that has a very shallow palate and not very good lingual undercuts, a couple of C-class can be placed on the two most distal teeth to add for retention and also to aid the um, patient in getting the appliance removed from their mouth. Our last design is designed by Dr. DeWitt Wilkerson and it's called the Dawson B Splint. This appliance is great for maintaining tooth position as a retainer, but it also has the function of a deprogrammer. There's a couple different options to this appliance. The first is the maxillary only option. This appliance is a one and a half millimeter overlay full arch. A one and a half millimeter is again a little bit thicker than an invisible retainer would be, so it gives it a little bit more strength for the appliance to hold up under. The discluding element that's added has quite a bit more range of motion than some of the other um, appliances have. There's also a mandibular portion that can be worn with the upper portion. The dual arch option is great if you think that the patient might need to deprogram either 24 hours a day or if the patient's going to be wearing their deprogrammer for an extended period of time, an extended period of time. The maxillary can be worn during the day on its own, and then the lower portion could be added for nighttime wear. Because all of the teeth are covered, you don't have to worry about any kind of super eruption issues. Here's some more tips on different design options that you might want to take into consideration for different situations that you might come across. If there aren't very good or strong undercuts, say it's a younger patient and their undercuts aren't very strong, you can add a few clasps to the case. If you have a severe gagging patient, consider using either a lower appliance or if it's an upper appliance, consider what we call no tissue contact where the acrylic isn't covering the palate at all. It's brought right to the gingival margin. You could also limit the number of teeth that are covered by the appliance, which might make it a little bit more acceptable for the, the gag reflex patient. If the patient has anterior tooth sensitivity, you could actually have the appliance designed with no facial coverage, say 6 to 11 or 7 to 10. We could also use a material called isofolin, which is a little bit of a blackout material so that the acrylic isn't hitting the teeth quite so hard. This is also another great option if the patient happens to have veneers and you want to be a little bit more gentle. We can also add a soft liner material, and the soft liner on the prescription is, is called hard soft material. So it has a little bit of a one millimeter of a mouth guard type material on the inside of the appliance with a hard occlusal. This can also be used for patients that have a lot of crown and bridge work or veneers again because it's very gentle to the porcelain. For considering whether you're going to go with an upper or lower deprogrammer, you can look at the, the patient's classification. So if they're a class one, you could use either the maxillary or mandibular appliance, either one will work fine. 
If they're a class two, definitely put the appliance on the maxillary arch. What happens is if the, because of their class two situation, if it was done on the lower arch, the acrylic would have to stick out so far to capture the maxillary contacts that it would stick out too far towards the patient's lips and might be a little bit uncomfortable for them. If the patient is a class three, consider a mandibular appliance for the same reason as a class two, the acrylic might stick out too far. So cover the arch that has the most crowding of teeth or an uneven incisal edges. This will make the appliance not only easier for you to adjust, but will make the function of the deprogrammer smoother for the patient. If the patient has just gone through orthodontic treatment or maybe some type of Smart Moves aligner, you can use a B-splint or a Coist deprogrammer to not only retain the tooth position, but to also act as a deprogrammer. So when you're sending in for your deprogrammer to be made by the laboratory, all that's really needed are upper and lower models, and a bite registration really isn't needed unless you think that the laboratory wouldn't be able to determine very well where the maximum intercuspation or center occlusion position is. On some of these patients, because they've bruxed for so long, they might have very flat tooth surfaces and it might be difficult for the laboratory to determine where that proper COMIP position is. So in a case like that, send a bite registration to be on the safe side. So speaking about the delivery of the appliance, the first thing to check for when you place it in the patient's mouth is to make sure that everything seats properly. Make sure that both sides are completely seated because that will throw off the contacts if one side is lifted up. Ask the patient as well how it feels. If they indicate to you that it feels a little bit too tight, you can relieve those areas on the inside of the splint. However, if when you place the splint in the patient's mouth, if it felt like it had proper retention and didn't feel too tight to you, you might want to have the patient wear it for a few days and let you know how it feels. Because sometimes after 10 minutes of wearing an appliance, if it felt a little bit tight initially, it might get more comfortable even after just 10 minutes of wear. If there are areas that are definitely tighter than they should be, whether you can feel them or the patient is indicating that they're too uncomfortable for them to wear, take a carbide burr and adjust the inside of the splint in the areas that the patient has indicated. You can also adjust the height of the splint if it's a very thin area, so you can bring up the height of that appliance to over where the height of contour is. After you've determined that the appliance is seated properly and is comfortable, Check to make sure that the contacts are all there for the appliance that you've chosen. So for instance, with the Great Lakes Mini Deprogrammer, you will want to see all four of the lower teeth in contact. In this example, you're only seeing three contacts. So what you would do in a case like this is you would take your acrylic burr and gently grind down on the three contact points that you see. You would do that until you see the fourth contact point in place. Once you have all your contacts, the last thing to check for is as a patient functions in a protrusive and lateral movement. Check the posterior teeth to make sure that you're not seeing any teeth contact and there's no interferences at any time while they wear the appliance. For the spear anterior deprogrammer, you should see all six of the lower teeth contacting. So you'll see all six contact points on the front part of the appliance. And again, check to make sure that there aren't any interferences during function. With the Kois and the Cranum appliance, you will see the lower two central contacts only. With this appliance, you might have a case where it looks like the discluding element is slightly off-center. This is, can be normal for that particular case. On this articulator, you can see how this patient's midline is quite a bit off from the upper midline. The lower midline is, is quite a bit to the right side. So, on this appliance, or on the, either the Kois or the Cranum, that discluding element has to follow exactly where those two lower centrals are. So you might see every now and then a discluding element that looks a little bit off-center, but that's because it had to follow where the proper contacts are. Lastly, we have the Dawson B-Splint, and what you'll want to see when you place the appliance and are checking the contacts is two very even straight lines going protrusively on the appliance. In this example, you see that the one side is quite a bit heavier of contacts than the other side. So you would take your burr and grind down very lightly on that 
heavier side until you start to see the other side match in, in intensity and in very even lines going protrusively. A adjust the Dawson B split maxillary only without the lower appliance in place first because the patient may be wearing the upper appliance without the lower piece there. But after it does, also check the lower appliance to make sure that again, no interferences are occurring and that everything is comfortable to the patient. Some clinicians will recommend that deep programmers are not intended for long-term wear to prevent super eruption. Make sure the patient knows not to wear the deep programmer any longer than what is recommended as super eruption and non of non-contacting teeth can occur. That's the exception though with the Dawson B splint because it is a full arch coverage appliance. So let the patient know that after they take their appliance out in the morning that their bite might feel a little unusual at first. This is perfectly normal and that's the way it probably will feel for them. However, after they eat breakfast, everything should feel back to normal again. Instruct them that if it doesn't feel normal, that they should contact your office right away. You just want to make sure that you don't have any kind of super eruption issues happen. It won't happen with every patient, it happens with every now and then, but you do definitely want to catch it before anything would progress further. If the appliance has any pain for the patient, either wearing it for a couple of nights or after the first week, if their pain has actually increased from when they wore the appliance before, instruct them to discontinue the appliance to come into your office because this might indicate an intercapsular problem, which again would be a contraindication for the use of this appliance. The duration the patient wears the appliance might depend either on your treatment plan or on the patient's symptoms. Some patients might find a great amount of relief after just a week or so of wearing the appliance, and other patients might take six months or longer. For patients that have find a great amount of relief right away, they can wear the appliance until those symptoms are relieved, and then you might instruct them just to wear the appliance whenever symptoms reoccur. This might be during times of more stress in their life or if they just discover that they're bruxing more. For other patients, it might take six months or longer. And in these cases, it takes sometimes a longer time for the muscles to completely relax and allowing those joints to be seated in a very comfortable position. After that happens though, you can definitely determine where the treatment plan will be going from there. You can always contact Great Lakes Orthodontics for more information on either courses or other tools that might help you in that treatment planning process. Appliances made by the laboratory will save you a great amount of chair side time. Because they're already fitted to the model and were checked for fit before they left the laboratory, we also make sure that the contacts are correct on the articulator as well as that they function properly without those interferences being there. So having them already pre-checked in a way will help you save a lot of time when you go to deliver the appliance. Deep programmers are very easy to use and have very high patient compliance. Because these appliances are so small in size, patients are usually very good about wearing them. And they're also so effective in what they do that they will become one of the most important tools in your practice. There are always a lot of questions when you're using a new technique or a new appliance, so feel free to contact me to consult about any questions that may arise.